It's the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews, the 12th chapter, flip over in your phone, iPad, whatever you got that you use, whatever device. It's hard when you preach, and I look over and I see some of you on your phone hunting through your Bible. I know, and I can't tell if you're texting or, amen, so I'm just going to have confidence you can take care of all that. I wish I could look through the lens and see who's watching back. You ever think about that? We're reaching so many people through social media, and it's a wonderful thing. Hebrews chapter 12. Are you comfortable? Let me just say, I have so enjoyed this week, speaking of social media, the uh, overcoming testimonies. Last week I mentioned to you about sharing your testimony. It's so important for you to share that which God has put in your heart, what he's done. And we're going to talk about that today. As a matter of fact, it was Wednesday, Cheryl, that I started this message called Overcomer. And then I found out yesterday that you guys watched a movie called Overcomer. And throughout the week, we've been watching and dealing with testimony. And I thought, God, I just kind of smile when that stuff happens because you got to understand, we're not coordinating any of this. This, I didn't know what movie they're showing. I didn't know, uh, she didn't know what sermon I'm preaching. But as I moved through it, there ain't nothing more powerful than the blood of Jesus and the word of your testimony. You weren't looking for something to whoop the devil with? Amen. Well, I've been praying. I've been fasting. Yeah, Jesus said there's certain things only come out through prayer and fasting. But the Bible declares that to whoop the evil one is the blood of the lamb and the word of your testimony. Amen. When you put these two together, you just whoop the devil with it. So learn how to use your testimony. Can I get an amen? amen. Where there, the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race that is marked out for us. Now, let me mention a little bit about this cloud of witnesses. That because you come right out of chapter 11, which talks about so many great people of, that, uh, of God. Uh, I mean, it talks, starts out with Moses who endured, Abraham. It goes into Samson and Jephthah, and it just keeps walking through. We, we just figure that chapter 12 has to be talking about a cloud of witnesses. Now, that brings us into a little situation, and that's this. Is, are those that are in heaven watching us here on earth right now? And I hear people all the time say, well, I hope daddy's looking down. I've always kind of thought to myself, I hope they're not. <laughs> can, I, can I get an Amen. Amen. So whatever, maybe perhaps it's through the filter of the blood of Jesus. Can I get an amen? But there's a cloud that's watching. There's people that's cheering us on. So verse 2 says, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross. When you see the word pioneer, it's different than a trailblazer. Trailblazers find a trail that's already there. Pioneers have to find and make the trail. So Jesus already established the trail and the path for which we could go. The perfecter of our faith, the maturer of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. I can tell you there are things you do in life, that it is no joy. It's no fun. But if you can look beyond it to the joy that you're going to get when it's over with. Uh, one of the things about our church that I've always loved, including this building, the building we're in in Ukraine, is if we had the staff and the volunteers to do it, if we had the ability to do it, we do it ourselves. We don't hire it out. We mow our grass. We take care of our building. We paint the walls. We put up the structures. Uh, I, I would say 90% of everything we've ever done as churches, amen, we've done it ourselves. You know what that does to you? It gives you a joy at the end of it. It gives you a pride. Now, amen, you feel good about what you're doing. So I always feel good about that. Amen. So for the joy set before him, endured the cross, the, the scorning or despising its shame, sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Right now, we're in a time of our lives of growing weary and losing heart, which means disheartened, discouraged. So what we need to do is find a way to get victory. And victory comes through what? Our testimony. Amen. Reminding ourselves what we've been through in life and the blood of Jesus. Father, I thank you for the word of God. Anoint my lips to share it, our hearts to hear and receive. Thank you for your mercies. They were new to us this morning. In Jesus' name. And everyone shout. Amen. 
Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Great cloud of witnesses. You know, in our minds, again, we believe the cloud is the ancient of old Moses, Abraham, Ruth, David, Joshua, Peter, James, John. But I also believe it is to be to those who have impacted our lives and overcome in testimonies. When I look back over life, I, there are people that were in this house and are still here now. And when you're gone, I will probably still be sharing your testimony because I've heard it. When I read things that I did not know, that some of the hardships that people have in, in, endured and overcome and how Jesus had changed their life and the fellowship of the house of God uh, affected them. I, I, just wa I just welled up. I said, God, I had no idea. But everybody has a song to sing. Everybody has a testimony. Revelation 12, 11 says, and they overcame him because of the blood, him speaking of Satan himself, because of the blood of the lamb, what Jesus did, and because of the word of their testimony. And watch this. And they loved not their life even unto death. And that's the hard part. But love not your life even unto death. This is speaking again of those who overcame. Second John chapter 7, uh, uh, Second John verse 7, no chapters in there, says in the Amplified Version, Look to yourselves, take care that you may not lose, throw away or destroy all that we and have labored for, but that you may persevere unto you win and receive back a perfect reward in full. Let me read that again to you. Look to yourselves. Take care that you may not lose or throw away or destroy all that we and you have labored for, but that you may persevere into, until you win and receive back a perfect reward in full. Again, what we do here is going to matter there. There'll be a reward for us in heaven. It blows my mind that not only will you get heaven, not only will you get eternal life, but you're going to get a reward you, for living down here. And don't throw it all away. This hits me because in our own lives, if you're anything like me, you're thinking about the end of this, how we get to the end, and I don't want to throw it all away. I've worked too hard. I've slain too many devils. I've fasted too long. I've prayed too long. I've gave too much. And I don't want to lose my crown in the end. Come on, give me an amen. I don't want that to happen. So in my mind, I went back and I, and I discovered a, a young girl who was a part of our church several years ago. And I looked at some of her testimony. Some of you may remember her. Her name was Megan Spade. In October 20, 2012, this was her testimony. She's going to say, I'm going to stop looking back and start moving on and learn how to face my fears. Love all of my heart. Make my mark. I want to leave something here. Go out on a ledge without any net. That's what I'm going to be about. It's one thing to write a testimony like that. And it's another thing that knowing within the next few months, you're going to pass into eternity. This little girl was 16 years old in a part of our church. She had cerebral palsy. She, she was a, a dynamic. Uh, and, and the reason I bring her up is because what an overcomer. Everybody say overcomer. An overcomer, literally in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, 24, tells us they were people who wanted to, the creed would be to run to win. Paul said, you've all been to the stadium and seen the athletes race. Everyone runs. One wins. Run to win. All good athletes train hard. They do it for a gold medal that tarnishes and fades. You're after one that's gold eternally. I don't know about you, but I'm running hard for the finish line. I'm giving it everything I've got. No sloppy living for me. I'm staying alert and in top condition. I'm not going to get caught napping, telling everyone else about it when, when missing out myself. When I read what Paul said here, and I realize this, this it's metaphorically that I'm running toward the, the goal. I'm pressing in. I'm not going to give up. No sloppy living here. And then I look back again at Megan's life. Go to this next one, if you would. Amen. She said, yeah, uh, no, uh, that's it. Yeah, I want to be running when the sand runs out. Because people do it every day. Promise themselves they're going to change. I've been there, but I'm changing from the inside out. When I read that, I thought, here we go. What this little girl had inside of her, and I could use many other testimonies, but when I'm reading this, I realized that she had such a, a blessing in her life. She said uh, in, in July 15, 2012, she said, going to be a great week for me, baby girl. Going to church camp to get closer to God and help little kids get closer as well. I can't wait. July 18th, 2012, camp was amazing this week. Over 100 campers. I was changed forever Monday night. I was the first one to the altar and the last one to leave. I cried tears of joy and sadness, but now I know God is always with me. And when I was praying, 
I felt the presence of the Lord beside me. I'm reading this and I realized this little girl's testimony began to change me. It began to affect me. Competition. She talked about pressing in and how camp changed her life. There are things that will change your life if you'll just step up. I don't care if it's a, 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 a meeting with our widows and widowers. It could be a, a part of the, the, the CIS meeting. Any of the meetings that go on the, that take place in this church. But you've got to put yourself in a position for God to change your life. This is what Megan did. Competition to strive as an objective, such as a position, profit or prize, a contest between rivals. The law of competition says for me to win, there must be a rival. There's got to be a rival. In this young girl's life, her rival was the cerebral palsy. You know, I used to play her basketball. I hopped around on one leg, <laughs> and she'd hop around on two legs, and she still beat me. Amen. But she had a rival, and her, her rival, my friend, was the devil and cerebral palsy. You got a rival. You better pick who your enemy is. You need to understand you got a, you got a devil that hates you. Amen. He has nothing good in mind for you. And many times we forget that. What are you competing against? Complacency, procrastination, lust of the eyes, the flesh, the pride of life, a certain disease, cancer, bone, muscle, nerve. We all got to find our rivals, and then you got to fight it. You've got to decide, I'm coming against that. So the scripture says, so when you run, when you have this testimony, you do it so that you may obtain. To obtain means to take eagerly, to seize through, take and aim. Amen. You've got to decide to win. These are things that I know. A decision determines your destiny. Once you make a decision that I'm going to serve God, it affects your destiny all the way around. Second, eternity is speeding toward us. You're not running toward eternity. It's coming at you. Amen. It's moving fast. Listen to me. 672 million people die worldwide every year. Somebody, I keep hearing about the death rate of a virus. Listen to this again. 672 million people pass away every year on this planet. 56 million a month are dying on this planet. 4,679,000 a day are dying on this planet. Amen. Before I finish this sermon... 153,000 and a half are going to die on this planet. 153, that, that just blows your mind. Break it down a little bit more. That's 6,392 people a minute. That's 106 people every second. You can't, you can't wrap your head around this. Amen. In other words, every second of the day, somebody's passing into eternity. So you, we're not going toward eternity. It's running toward us. Yeah. Amen. So destiny hinges on our decisions in life because evidently we're going to add to this stat someday. Uh, matter of fact, I looked, at, I looked at it live and the numbers just kept ticking. And I thought, those all represent a life, a mom, a dad, a brother, a sister, somebody who has affected on this planet that did something here. Right decisions are founded in principle. A decision is the initiative of victory. You got to start. Amen. You got to do so. You got to get going here. People that make small right decisions also make large right decisions. Decisive people are overcomers. Again, you know, you say, Pastor, you keep bringing up this little girl. You know I do, and I'm going to tell you why. Because I did her funeral. This little girl had a, had a drive inside of her. There was something about the little country church. There's something about Christ in you. There's something about what she met in life that changed her. March 13th, 2013, just two months before she died, she wrote this. She said, it amazes me. Listen to this testimony. It amazes me how God has transformed me over the years. I read about Abraham and Moses and, and David, but I'm going to tell you, you are a modern-day overcomer. You are a modern-day epistle being read and written by men. People look at you, you. Your book is right before them as you share it with your life and the grace and the mercy of God. She said, God has transformed me over the years. I went from doubt to a heart overflowing with faith. I didn't have a clue who he was a few years ago, but now he's my best friend. Choosing to follow God was the best decision I ever made. Now I'm surrounded by the most faithful people. After learning more, I made a choice to serve God the rest of my life. Two months before she drowned, she said, I made a decision to follow God the rest of my life. And she had 60 days left on this planet. And she gave everything she had. See, the thing I'm reason I'm bringing Megan up is I made a promise when I did her funeral that I would never let people forget her. Because in times, the thing that you don't want in life is to ever be forgotten. When you leave this planet, you want to make sure that your testimony is still ringing. 
Amen. That people still know about you. That people still remember the things you did. Amen. The, mainly the good things. Amen. Now I'm surrounded by the most faithful people. After learning more, I made a choice to serve God the rest of my life and become a youth pastor for the little country church. Well, by proxy, she's not here. But a lot of her testimony and influence still lives on among our youth. That's why it's important not to forget her. And trying to start an organization with a few of the best teens I ever met. You know, in other words, we make a plan. And then she says, God truly works miracles. Couldn't have done it without certain people in my life. We make a plan, then God decides. Amen. We, we, you know, she had a plan in her life. She, she was pressing forward to do something. But she had no idea how this thing was going to turn out. An overcomer is a person who gets up one more time than they fail. That's it. You just got up one more time than you fail. You can't be an overcomer until you realize you got something to come over. That's right. You got to decide, you know, I got to get over this apathy. I got to get over this procrastination. I got to get over this stinginess. I got to get over this stuff in my life. If I can get over that, amen, I become an overcomer. Moses overcame inferiority with Pharaoh. David overcame fear with Goliath. Daniel overcame with lions. Jesus overcame death, hell, and the grave. Decisive people win. The scripture says, Paul mentioned in 1 Corinthians 9, 26, I therefore so run, not as uncertain, amen, indistinct, without clarity or double-minded. My mind's not double, like James said, unstable in all my ways. I'm not vacillating. I don't have two spirits. I have this thing that I'm pressing toward. There are promises to every winner. There's a promise. Let me give you some promises here. You get rewards. Everybody say reward. Oh, yeah, I see them on signs all the time. Want it. You get a reward. If you can discover this or find this or, or, or help somebody with this. Amen. The scripture says in Revelation 2.11, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes will not be hurt at all by the second death. One of my rewards is that when I die, I won't feel it. Amen. I won't have the turmoil or the sadness. The sting will be taken away. It's not the end. It's a new beginning. Death is not the master of the house. He's only the porter at the king's lodge, appointed to open the gate and let the king's guests into the realm of eternal day. It is the door that opens. Amen. Paul said to live as Christ, to die is to gain. To any believer, it's gain. Why is that, pastor? It secures us to unending joy. To be absent from this body, this earth suit, is to be present with the Lord. And in the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. Why is there going to be fullness of joy? Because my friends and my family are going to be there. Amen. It puts an end to this weariness. No more fighting. Amen. The things that we've gone through in life, it frees us from the possibility of pain and sorrow. No more tears. The Bible says when we enter in, He's going to wipe away our tears. It delivers us from the assaults of the evil one. I ain't going to have to fight that devil no more. Hallelujah. It unites us to the great ones who have gone before. We're going to get time with people. It's going to be a reward. Amazing place. Second reward, permanence. He mentioned my name. When you hear your name, whew, it brings joy or a whooping. Right? To hear your name. It's such an important thing. He who overcomes, reward number two, like them He'll be dressed in white. Somebody asked me all the time, I said, Pastor, why do you wear black so much? Because when I get to heaven, I got to wear white. Yeah. Amen. I won't get to wear black anymore, so I'm going to wear all my black now. He said, I will never blot out his name from the book of life, he that overcomes, but will acknowledge his name before my Father and his angels. Yeah. Just the thought that Jesus, when he walks by the angels, says, you met my son Dick. You know, my son, Tommy, if you met my daughter, Linda, oh, my goodness, they overcome us. To hear your name, to know he calls you by name, is such an empowerful, powerful thing. June 23rd, 2012, again, another excerpt from Megan's Facebook, her testimony. She just kept writing them. She said, I realized that I want to do for the rest of my life, follow Jesus, give him my all. I got baptized in May in 2010, but I never knew what that really meant. Until now, I want to change people's life through my experience, through what God tells me. Something lit up in me today, a desire, a passion for heaven. Reward, reward. We'll become a strength. Amen. Look at this reward, number three. Him who overcomes, I'll make a pillar in the temple of my God. Never again will he leave it. A pillar, a pillar, 
A pillar. These are pillars. These columns in this here building. These, my friend, are pillars. What they do is they hold the structure up. So he says, I'm going to tell you what you're going to do. One of your rewards is, is you're going to be the strength in this house. Amen. You're going to support structure. The, the next one, amen, to sit in authority. Revelation chapter 3, verse 21. To him who overcomes, I will give the right to sit with me on my throne. Just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. Many of you, when you think of a throne, you think of a, a, a chair, a bench, a, a place to sit. But it literally means a place of authority. Amen. You don't have to be sitting exactly to have authority. And it doesn't have to just be a single seat. It can be spread out. And everybody has authority. Now, the question I got that I cannot answer, and I know some religions try to do it, I, I just refuse to try to answer the question because I don't know yet. But why do you need authority in heaven? Authority means you're over something. Amen. In other words, God has a plan for you in eternity to put you over something. And I believe when you're faithful in the small here, he'll put you over the great there. Amen. I don't know how it works. I just know that I want to get there to find out. Amen. That, that's a reward. So he said, you overcome, you're going to get that. You're going to be a, a, a pillar. Your name's going to be written. I'm going to share your name. Amen. Next one. Amen. Never separated from his love. One of the great rewards is knowing that we'll always be together. Romans 8, 37. Knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers or viruses. I, I added that there. Amen. Neither height nor death nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Nothing. I mean, I don't know if you catch this real good. The message says none of this phases us because Jesus loves us. I'm absolutely convinced that nothing, nothing living or dead, angelic or demonic, today or tomorrow, high or low, thinkable or unthinkable, absolutely nothing can get between us and God's love because of the way that Jesus, our master, has embraced us. Wow. Nothing. Nothing. May 24th, 2013, two days before Megan drowned. It's like yesterday. I get the phone call. I rushed downtown to the medical center, and I went into that little room, and there she was, and the, the sheet up to her chest. I read all these back seven years ago when she would write them, and I'd smile, thinking, my goodness, what a testimony. May 26, she passed. Cramp, something caught her while she was swimming. And she never came up. She said, be strong in faith. God is with you. Never give up. God has plans for you. Count your blessings. A new day. Not promised. Stay positive. It gives you light in your path smile more worry less you will be happier be different stand out god will love you anyways change the world it will help you inspire lastly live each day with all you have you'll never know if it'll be your last well megan i kept my promise Seven years after your home going, I'm still talking about you. And seven more years from now, I'll mention her too, and I'll probably mention a lot of other people. But she was an overcomer. I think about, I'm 59 years old, how much more life I've got to live here on this planet. But then I thought to myself, what a life she has had. No more cerebral palsy. No more people laughing or pointing at her because of the way she walked, drug a leg. People can be so mean. Overcomer. That's what you are. You forgot what you overcame. You forgot how far you've come.
You've got to step up and embrace that and say, look, Jesus did his part on the cross by the blood. Amen. And because of that, I'm going to overcome with my testimony. Don't you be afraid to share your testimony. Or you say, well, pastor, I, I can't, I, I, I never was really in sin. Great testimony. Tell somebody they can do this thing without falling. Amen. But if you ever went down, please tell somebody that you overcame an addiction, that you overcame a problem, that you overcame. Somebody out there needs to hear that you were depressed at one time and now you are positive. You are overcoming depression. Amen. And it can be overcome. You know, the scripture, Jesus said, I'm the truth and the life, the way. Amen. Nobody comes to the Father except to me. I go back to truth. I go back to life. I go back to the way. Amen. The scripture says, I call on the name of the Lord. I'll be saved. I thank God that Megan overcame. Amen. She stepped and she wrote about it. She left a le- she left an epistle. I could take her words and put it in the Bible. Amen. That's just how good it is. Hallelujah. Again, I share with you Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. They loved not their lives unto the end. Heads bowed, eyes closed for a moment. Father, you gave us testimonies. When I read the Word of God, I read David's testimony, Abraham's testimony, Moses' testimony, Ruth's testimony. I read Joshua's testimony as from me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I read Peter's testimony when I read his epistles. I read John's, the beloved, how much he loved you. James, the stern-hearted, prophetic, minister of the gospel God everybody here has a testimony and I speak for it to rise up right now in the name of Jesus that every testimony in this house and everybody watching that testimony will rise this world needs to know that they're winning that there's a, a purpose in life that this world needs to know that we can overcome the things that are pressing against us that we can overcome uh, sin God we can overcome problems we can overcome depression we can overcome cancer we can overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony in Jesus name Jesus name head still bowed eyes closed those watching again online can be f- just for you right now Pastor, I need boldness. I need wisdom on how and what to say. Again, not everything you've gone through needs to be written down. Not everything you've gone through needs to be shared. But there are things that you have overcome that become a part of your testimony that's important for you to share. It's not a contest to see who was worse than anyone else or better than anyone else. It's simply this is what God has done in my life. Pastor, I'm asking God to give me boldness to share my testimony, not only in word, but also with my mouth to others. Amen. Would you pray for me? Put your hand up for you if that's you. You need boldness. Father, the Spirit of God in this house, I speak, God, fill them with the Holy Ghost. God, give them boldness to speak the Word of God. God, just like Peter did on the day of Pentecost, Lord, to walk out and to share your Word with others. I speak in the name of Jesus for boldness in this house to go forth in Jesus' name. And everyone shout. Amen, amen. Now I'm going to give you one more thing real quick here. What goes into a testimony? Well, Pastor, what goes into it? Now, this is just a real good, easy teaching. First, what was your life like before you found Jesus? Maybe should I say, we need to rewrite that, Cheryl. I should have said before Jesus found you. Amen. What was your life like before Jesus found you? Amen. Second, what has been the difference since you gave your life to him? Because if there was no change, then there's no change. There has to be a born again experience. There has to be a change in our life. That desire, that pressing in. And by the way, when God, God, <laughs> when God saved you, He didn't change your character. Not that day. It takes time for that to change. Amen. So quit beating yourself up. I'm telling you, give you a little time and watch what God does. He turns some things around. How did you come to attend in the little country church? That's a question I ask people all the time. How'd you get here? Amen. What made you? Sh- there was a girl showed up out. A young, not a girl, she, she, uh, probably 50 years old or so. Out at the other campus last week. I looked at her. Her name's Annie Hill. I said, Annie. How, how? She said, Pastor, you were my pastor 25 years ago. She said, I found you again. You know that funny looking guy up here with his chinny chin chin hair. Picks a guitar. Rides a Harley. 
connected with her and told her where he go to church. And she said, that's my pastor. I've been looking for him. She lived way out in Shepherd. Amen. Rode her Harley to church last Sunday. Amen. How did you get here? So important. People want to know that. Amen. What do you have to say to those who may not know Christ yet? What would you tell them? Be honest with them. This ain't, a, this ain't always a bed of roses right here. Amen. It ain't always easy. But I'd rather live with the stink than perish in the storm. Amen. I'll hang out in here. And then the lastly, how would you like for God to use you in his kingdom? Amen. How, what do you want God to do for you in his kingdom? Now, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So thy, the kingdom of God is not just when you get to heaven. It's right now. Amen. You are actually in the kingdom. Amen. And we're walking in the kingdom. And we're, it's the king's domain. You can give your home can be the king's domain where the king rules. Amen. Your business can be the king's domain where the king rules. Wherever you at, it's the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. When you're in your vehicle, on your Harley horse, it's the king's domain. That's what kingdom means. Kingdom dominion. Amen. To take dominion. Amen. So there's some good, good, uh, just good teaching to help you out. So this week, I want to read more testimonies. I want you to get them out there. You don't know who sees that. That I'm, I'll never know them, but they see your stuff and they go, you know what? I had no idea. Amen. And they begin to share it with others. And they keep sharing with others. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thanks, Dick. Uh, you you got to go. <laughs> you got to get on out of here. Thank you, sir. Y'all give him a hand. Amen. Would you do that? I appreciate Dick stepping up. Amen. 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 Through all that. Uh, if you need a tithe off an envelope, it's right there in front of you. I thank you for your faithfulness. You know, there were things we were going to do through this pandemic. One of them was make sure we had new flooring in the building. We got new flooring in out at the other campus. We've started, uh, uh, David and a couple of them have already finished the 4-H on one side. It needed uh, a partial roof. And now we've tried to put a canopy up. Let me just mention this to you. Uh, we started digging holes last week to put this awning up that we're going to build. We're doing it ourselves. I had no idea. 14 holes, two by two by two with a shovel. Huh? That's a lot of dirt. You see, it ain't much. Come out there and fall in one. No auger, no tractor. You know, and this is when I, and here's the thing that's going to happen. I already know this. By the time we get all this done, we'll end up buying something else or get somebody give us something that we could have dug that hole with. <laughs> yep, Charlie said I, try, I brought Charlie in an extra day just so she could dig some more. She did so good. Amen. She did so good. But if you want to come out, and James came out and helped us out. If you'd like to come out and help us this uh, Tuesday, Tuesday morning, starting about probably 8, 30, 9 o'clock. Might even start a little earlier than that. But uh, we, we're just trying to get this uh, awning up, trying to make it look good. And, and while we're kind of on the downside, didn't have camps this summer, we're trying to build things. In other words, we're going to keep rising up. I ain't going to go down, I ain't going to waller. Amen. Going to believe God for the best. Can I get an amen? Amen. So you stand with us with your tithe and offering. And don't forget, man, the one reason that a lot of people get in a lot of trouble, they don't give a dime. And if you don't give a dime on a dollar, you'll never give anything more than that. You won't give your time, your talent, or your treasure. So learn to be a tither. Amen. Let it be a part of your life. I'm going to always be a tither. I'm always going to be. The truth of the matter is, if church is tithed, this one principle gave 10%. If people did that, they'd never be in need for asking for extra offerings, ever. I was out in Utah last week, week before, whenever that was. Salt Lake City, home of the Mormons. Y'all familiar with them? I know a little bit about them. I watched a show called Hell on Wheels. And, uh, and then I've also connected with them out at the camp. But I was shocked as I went through that city and saw steeple, after steeple, after steeple of Mormon, uh, not just tabernacles and temples, but stakes, they call them. And then I got questioning, and I found out that every member of the Mormon church are tithers. They give 10%. And if they don't, the bishop shows up at that place and says, because they, they got this thing about their name being written and about uh, genealogies and, and all this other stuff. So they make sure they all tithe us. Now, I've never agreed with showing up and telling somebody. You don't give a dime. 
Amen. Your, your give a dime is busted. I've never done that with people. Because I believe it should be volunteer. I, should, I believe it should come from your heart. Because not only does it, if it comes from your heart at 10%, amen, you'll give over and above that simply because you're oh, just overwhelmed with God. Amen. And I've never been the preacher to preach prosperity, but I believe in prosperity. I believe everybody should prosper as your soul prospers. I believe that because that's the word of God. Amen. Amen. Let me give some quick announcements. You can give up and get, give the, uh, the, the end of the service here. Amen. Lift Bible study today, August 16th. Amen. Sister Diane. Is it Diane here? Oh, Diane Spurlock, you got that today? Amen. Thank you so much today. So right after service, y'all meet back there. Ladies, amen. Uh, swim day. If you want to come swimming, 3 o'clock today. Bring your swim trunks and a towel. Come out to the ranch. Swim your pool's beautiful. It's really chilly in the deep end. Amen. So come out if you like to swim. 3 o'clock today from 3 to 5. They'll be uh, swimming there at the camp. Hey, it's your swimming pool too. Go out and use it. Tuesday night, got prayer meeting here, two or more. I was here last Tuesday night. Uh, I really enjoyed praying and gathering. And there was a lot of people here for prayer meetings. So Tuesday night, show up. Muscle Car Sunday, September 27th. Get that in mind. We'll be having sign-ups in the back later on. It will be more of a condensed service. Not going to have a real long, protracted service. Matter of fact, we're even going to start up by, I think, 11 o'clock in the afternoon for that. But we're going to have a car show, hallelujah, out at the ranch. And we're going to invite people out and we're going to win people to Jesus. Amen. amen. Come on, give me a big amen. 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 Brian, you know, talking about uh, giving, you know, one, one principle I picked up on a long time ago is, is pastor was talking about, you know, watching or showing up to your house. Here's the reality. Jesus stood there as people gave. The widow gave her two mites, and he, he knew what other people were thinking, and he said, listen, she gave more than y'all. So he was paying attention watching what everybody put into the bucket. That's just Jesus. I'm just saying, that's Bible. So, you know, uh, it's funny how we get upset about people who know or think they know about what we give, but the reality was Jesus stood there and watched them put it into the bucket. So just a thought. Uh, you know, I'm grateful for the fact that, that I get to be a giver. In America, we, we, we act like, oh, man, how could I? The truth is, like Pastor said, if I can't give on one dollar, I'll never give on a hundred dollars. I'll never give on a thousand dollars. And we keep praying, "Oh God, I need more so that I could give." The reality is, He's saying, "Look, if you can't give on a dollar, you'll never give on a thousand dollars. You'll never give on ten thousand dollars." So I just I, I encourage you, give and watch God overflow your life because that's what the Word of God says. And if you believe it, you'll do it. Amen. Today we're believing God for. Jobs and better jobs. More money, less hours. Benefits, sales and commission, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, bills paid off, settlements, inheritance, rebates and returns, debts demolished, royalties received, favor and success to the kingdom. Thank you for the gift and the giver in the house, Lord. I just pray that you would bless them all. As they leave today, I just pray that their weeks would be filled with you. Because that's the greatest blessing we'll ever receive. I love you. I thank you. I send them in your name. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen.